Here's another handy title studio feature. It's the text path effect. Simply apply it to a text shape entry, draw a suitable spline object, and the text can be animated to follow the outline of the spline object. With a little imagination, some interesting results can be achieved. In this short tutorial, I'll describe the various parameters for the feature. I'm using Title Studio in Continuum 2022. Your UI may be different. I'll start by changing the default text string. Now to apply the text path effect. With the texture track entry selected and the controls window open, select the path tab. With the path window open, place a check mark in the Make Path Track checkbox. This will create another entry labeled Text Path under the Texture Track. To create the text path, select this entry and use any one of the spline creation tools to draw a spline object. For this example, I'm going to draw a circular spline so I'll select the Oval tool. Now I don't want an oval, so I need to use a keyboard modifier to make sure that I draw a circle. I described the various keyboard modifiers for drawing spline shapes in tutorial 53. For a circle that increases in diameter from the center, I need to hold the Shift and Control keys down while drawing it. As you can see, the text follows the circumference of the circle when I release the mouse button. I'm now going to select the texture track again. Before I talk about animating the text, I need to deal with the alignment drop-down list. This simply determines which part of the text string occurs at the on-path motion parameter value. So, at the default setting of left, the text string starts initially at 0 degrees, that's top centre. As you can see, the centre option, for some strange reason, places the centre of the text at 180 degrees, not 0. The Distribute setting is an interesting one. When selected, it spreads the characters equally around the spline object. To animate the text, I need to use the On Path Motion parameter. First though, I have to decide where the text should be at the start of the timeline. In this instance, I'll have it start at top centre. So I'll adjust the parameter until the text is where I want it. Now I need to copy that value. You'll see why later. Now I can set up the animation. This will be familiar to most of you now, but for the benefit of newcomers, I'll go through it anyway. At the start of the timeline, I add a keyframe and set the interpolation mode as required. I'll use Accelerate. At the end of the timeline, I'll add a keyframe and set the parameter end value. I want the text to perform two complete circuits, so I'll set the parameter modifier to 2. Now, because I want the text to finish in the same position that it started, I need to enter the same value as at the beginning. 
This is why I copied it. I'll now run the animation. If I place a check mark in the reverse path checkbox, the text will animate in the opposite direction inside the spline circle. There's one more parameter to deal with, and that's the angle to path parameter. This value changes the way the text elements sit on the spline. A value of 100 causes each letter to sit perpendicular to the spline circumference. A value of 0 causes them to sit vertically, irrespective of where they are on the spline circumference. Intermediate values causes intermediate angles. Because this parameter has an interpolation box, it can be animated. The result is interesting, but I'm not sure what use it would be in practice. We'll now have a look at the parameters available for the text path entry. I want to deal with the last four parameters first. I'll explain why later. The two parameters jitter x and jitter y are a means by which the text can be made to deviate from the path in the x and y directions. The maximum values for these parameters is 50, but you'll find that amount of jitter unacceptable. Best results will be obtained with values less than 1. The velocity parameter sets the rate of jitter. The seed parameter provides a way of varying the jitter pattern. Now about the first three parameters. 
From my tests, I've not been able to discover their effect on any animation. There's no Boris FX documentation that cover these parameters, and Boris FX has been very silent in response to my request for information. Basically, if you don't want any jitter effect on your text, I suggest you forget about the animation tab. The text path effect is something you probably won't use very often, but can come in very handy when required. I use this effect in my opening logo sequence. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe if you haven't already done so. Join me if you can for my next tutorial. Until then, bye for now.